Hi, this is our group 17 members which is consisted of me, Irene Sofia, Kong Chichai, Nurin Fakiha, Amirul Aiman Hakim and Darren Anderson. For this integrated design project, we are asked to design 30,000 tonnes per year of hydrogen production with 99.9% .9 purity via SMR technology. The type of reactor used in this process is packback reactor, while the catalyst used is nickel on the aluminium oxide for SMR reactor and iron tree oxide for WGS reactor. Moving on, SMR technology works by three reactions involved, which are the first one, steam methane reforming SMR, that works at 700 until 1000 degrees Celsius under 20 until 35 atm. This process requires high temperature to favor endothermic reaction. The second process is water gas shift WGS. It works at 200 until 400 degrees Celsius under 10 until 15 atm. This shows that this process is actually exothermic reaction, so it requires low temperature to favor forward reaction. For the third process, pressure swing adsorption, this process is vital in achieving higher purity gas, which in this case is hydrogen gas, as it is a cyclic process that uses beds of solid adsorbent to remove impurities from gas. For the strategy to maximize selectivity and yield of hydrogen, we use three strategies. One of the strategies is to increase temperature of SMR reactor as a forward reaction in SMR reactor favors high temperature. This results in more yield of hydrogen produced. Second is to decrease temperature of WGS reactor. In WGS, the exothermic reaction favors low temperature thus causing the yield of hydrogen increases. And the last strategy is to increase concentration of pure methane as this will favor more forward reaction in SMR reactor producing more hydrogen. Next, I will be explaining on the reactor sizing. Here are the assumptions made to ease the calculation and simplify the equation. This is the kinetic data that is obtained from reliable sources. By using the information from the kinetic data, the reaction rate for both SMR and WGS reactor are calculated. It can be observed that the rate of fraction in SMR reactor is higher than that of WGS reactor. Next, the initial flow rate of reactant methane is calculated by firstly determining the flow rate of product hydrogen using the information given in the question. From the calculation, the initial flow rate of methane is 447.04 kmol per hour. Moving on, the stoichiometric table for SMR reaction is constructed as shown in this slide. By utilizing the stoichiometric table, the properties for each component such as flow rate, concentration, and composition can be calculated. Same goes to WGS reaction, the stoichiometry table is constructed. The properties of each component in the reactor then can be determined as shown. After completing the necessary calculation, the 5 steps method is used to determine the weight of catalyst in each reactor. The weight of catalyst in SMR and WGS reactor is 10.62 kg and 436.4 kg respectively. It can be observed that the weight of catalyst for WGS reactor is higher than SMR due to it having lower reaction rate, hence more catalyst is needed to speed up the reaction. After calculating the weight of catalyst, the volume of each reactor can be calculated. The volume obtained for SMR reactor is 0.00925 m3 and for WGS reactor, the volume is 0.3463 m3. The diameter and length of SMR reactor is 0.3 m and 5 m respectively. For WGS reactor, the diameter and length is 0.2 m and 10 m respectively. For CEB2053, process modeling and simulation, the hydrogen production from steam methane forming, SMR process, and water gas shift WGS reaction is simulated on symmetry software. Here is the process flow diagram of the simulated process which involves several utilities such as mixer, heater, plug flow reactor and cooler. In order to simplify the model, several assumptions were made. One of the important assumptions that I would like to highlight is, the pack bed reactor for actual SMR and WGS process were assumed to be plug flow reactor PFR, in the symmetry simulation. One of the goals in this part is, to validate and compare the value obtained from previous part with the experimental data which obtained through the simulation. The division error is calculated by comparing theoretical value, which is the calculated value, with the experimental data, which is the data obtained from symmetry. In SMR process, the outlet flow rates were compared. 
Derivation area calculated for water is 2.4%, while carbon monoxide and hydrogen were 5.3%. However, the percentage error for methane were 100%. This result could be explained due to the conversion value, which were 95% for manual calculation, while 100% for the simulation. Next, the SMR or the composition value were compared. Similar with the previous case, methane deviation error is 100%. The error for water is 4.1%, while both carbon monoxide and hydrogen deviation error are 3.5% each. For water gas shift reactor, the outlet flow rates of the reactor were studied. The deviation error calculated for water is 12.9%, followed by carbon dioxide, 10.7% and hydrogen, 6.6%. The deviation error for carbon monoxide is 100%, since it is the reactant for the reaction and were assumed to be fully consumed in the symmetry simulation. Lastly, in the outlet composition for WGS reactor, the deviation error calculated for carbon monoxide, water, carbon dioxide and hydrogen is 97.8%, 15.1%, 7.8% and 3.9% respectively. In the second part, a sensitivity analysis is conducted to study the effect of four operation variables on the reactor performance. The operation variables focused in the study are pressure, temperature, composition and flow rate. Firstly, by increasing inlet pressure of WGS reactor, the molar flow rate of hydrogen was observed to be increased. From the graph, the hydrogen increases sharply and then leveled off as the temperature increased from 600 to 1100 degrees Celsius. This can be explained from the equation, where pressure is directly proportional with molar flow rate. By choosing the right pressure, the yield of hydrogen could be maximized. Secondly, the increment of temperature of WGS in the stream shows a negative effect on carbon dioxide molar flow rate. Since the reaction taking place in WGS reactor is exothermic, the increment of temperature is not favorable for the conversion. This will reduce the molar fraction and molar flow rate of carbon dioxide at the outlet of the reactor. Thus, WGS reactor should operate at appropriate temperature to avoid reducing the conversion. Thirdly, the composition of inlet natural gas fed into the system is studied. As the molar fraction of methane increased from 0.1 to 1.0, the purity of methane increases in the natural gas feed. As a consequence, the product of both SMR and WGS process, respectively carbon monoxide and hydrogen, were observed to be increased as well. Last but not least, the flow rate of inlet natural gas feed were also studied. As the molar flow rate of methane increased, the molar flow rate of carbon monoxide and hydrogen were also increased. Similar with the composition effect, this could be explained due to the larger quantity of methane available to be reacted with steam, producing the product. So, higher molar fraction and molar flow rate of methane will increase the reactor performance as more hydrogen is produced at the outlet. For the part of separation process 2, we are using the absorption system for the design of H2 enrichment unit. We are using a commercial activated carbon, which is activated carbon AP360 to absorb the excess carbon dioxide gas from the feed stream to produce a high purity of H2, which is 99.9%. We are using activated carbon as adsorbent because it has a large surface area per unit volume and contains many microscopic pores. For the isotherm, we are using the Lamoy isotherm as it is widely used and found as a successful application in many adsorption processes. For the design of the adsorption column, it is made of stainless steel and surrounded with insulator and heating wires to assure a uniform heat distribution throughout the adsorption process. The inner wall is made of copper while the outer is brass. The inner ceramic balls which consist of natural silica structure are used to improve the gas flow distribution whereas the support grid is used to support the tower. Moving on to the strategy used to achieve 99.9% .9 purity of H2 production, a shorter adsorption time is proposed as the time of adsorption decreases. The CO2 adsorbed won't be escaped from the partially saturated activated carbon bed. For the desorption and regeneration process, we are using supercritical CO2 as desorbing agent as it has a lower energy consumption and a lower carbon loss. While for the regeneration process, it is commonly carried out using a thermal approach, such as the Activated carbon is dry and heated up to volatilize the adsorbed materials. Now I'll briefly explain the calculation involved in designing of H2 enrichment unit. The graph shows the breadth curve of carbon dioxide adsorption 
by activated carbon at 25 degrees Celsius, so the breakthrough concentration is assumed as 0 0.01. After extrapolating the concentration breakpoint at 0 0.01, the time taken for it to occur is at 30 minutes. The ideal absorption time can be calculated by extrapolating the concentration curve at 0 0.5, where the value of 10 is 25.5 minutes. Next, to perform the calculation of carbon dioxide to be absorbed, given the molar mass of carbon dioxide is 44 kg per picolomb mole, so the mass of carbon dioxide can be calculated by the product of molar fluoride, Pt and molar mass. So the mass of carbon dioxide to be absorbed is at 3 to 1.5 kg. Furthermore, to calculate the saturation capacity, the mass of adsorbent used, which is activated carbon, can be assumed as 10,000 kg. When dividing mass of CO2 adsorbed with the mass of activated carbon, the saturation capacity is 0 0.83 to 1.5 kg carbon dioxide per kg of activated carbon. Calculate the total bed length, the volume of activated carbon occupied is mass divided by density. The value obtained for the volume of activated carbon is 5.0761 m3. So the total bed length is volume of activated carbon divided by 1 m2, which is the cross-sectional area for H2 enrichment unit. To calculate the diameter of absorption column, it can be calculated by the formula given in the picture, and the value obtained is 1.128 m. To validate the purity of H2 produced, the molar fluoride of H2 at stream 6 is divided by the total molar fluoride, then multiply it with 100, so the percentage of 10 is 99.9%, .9%, which reached the requirement of the statement. Lastly, to calculate the mass transfer join, T over TT is 0.51 minutes. The used bed length is T over TT multiplied with total bed length, so the value of 10 is 2.589 meters. The unused bed length is 1 minus T over TT, then multiply it with the total bed length. The value of 10 is 2.487 meter. This project aims to produce 30,000 tons of hydrogen per year with 99.9% .9 of purity. When we first received the project, we conducted a meeting to discuss on what the question asks and distribute the task among the group members. We were a bit unsure on how to solve the problem since SMR's technology is using pet bed reactor, which not really discussed in class. We also faced some difficulties when we could not find necessary information from the references to help us with the calculation. However, we managed to overcome it by discussing among the team members and referring back to the recorded video lectures. The teamwork was very good and everyone is helping each other. We shared our ideas and suggested other ways to look for the solution. We believe that a good teamwork and communication is very important in completing the task given. We also ask guidance from lecturers so that the solution of the problem would not be misleading. Overall, this project is a success because everyone is giving their cooperation, hence we are able to complete it within the time given. Having a clear understanding of the problem will be helpful for future improvement. That's all from us. Thank you.